Hello guys, welcome to Surveying Solutions, your number one channel where you get solutions to all your surveying problems. Today we are going to discuss about leveling. On this particular video, we are going to solve a particular problem that um, is associated or a particular leveling problem. But before we do that, let's try to understand some things about leveling. Leveling actually is the determination of the change in elevation between points. The determination of the change in elevation between points. That means as you move from one point to the other, what is the change in elevation between the subsequent points or between the points you are moving? So that is just a simple definition of what leveling is. And in this exercise, we have some basic terms like your backside, your intermediate side, and your foresight. These three terms are very important. Your backside is actually the first observation you make on site, either to a benchmark or at every setup. So that is your backside, the first observation. Then your intermediate side are subsequent observations you make other than the foresight. There are subsequent observations you make other than the foresight. And what is your foresight? Your foresight is the last observation you make on site or the last observation you make before you change your instrument position. So that is your foresight. So these three terms are very important. I also made mention of a benchmark. A benchmark is a point of known elevation. It's just like a control. Yeah, a benchmark is a point of known elevation. It's where you start your leveling exercise anytime you go to site it can be a well-defined benchmark or a temporary benchmark so having said that we are going to consider the different methods and we are going to use to compute this leveling we have the rise and fall method and um, the height of instrument method so we are going to concern ourselves with these two methods on this surveying solution and um, but today or on this particular video we are going to use the rise and fall method to solve this particular leveling problem before i also go on i want to let us understand that leveling is um, performed or can be performed in changes the changes can be either five meters 10 meters 20 meters 25 meters as the case may be depending on the type of job or maybe the specification given so when you're doing leveling you don't really need to have maybe your centering over a point the only thing is that your instrument must be placed in a point whereby you can see the leveling staff and the person holding the staff for you must ensure that it is held vertically upright so the observations will be better on the staff so the next thing we are going to talk about is that as i said earlier we are using rise and fall method on this particular video to solve this particular problem so now let's look at the problem we have here they said the following readings we are taking with a dumpy level and a five meter leveling staff at common intervals of 20 meter the instrument was shifted after the second fourth and eighth readings prepare a leveling field book using rise and fall method and calculate the reduced level of the observed point the elevation of the benchmark is 132.135 so this is actually the question so these were the readings that we took or we are taking from the site so we have 0 0.875 1.235 until the last so the order of um, the way the observations we are taking have already been given in the question and they said the instrument was shifted after the what after the second fourth and the what and the eighth reading so from this particular set of observation we can see that this first one is definitely our backside because we say that is the first observation you take on site to a benchmark so this observation was taken to a benchmark and it's definitely our what, our backside and this observation here is the last observation taken on site because there are no other observations definitely this is what this is our foresight so we've been able to identify our first backside and our first foresight now we are going to look at the question and the instruction given to us to know which and which are our other backsides maybe intermediate sides and what 
and our other four sides. So I'm going to bring a sample or maybe a that's a, a model of how a computation sheet should look like and then we are going to work with that to um, answer this particular question that they said we should prepare a level field book and using rise and fall method. So this is actually a model of how a rise and fall method solution for a leveling problem looks like. Now from the question we are given, it, we are told that the observations are 0.875 which is definitely a backside here. Then the next thing on the instruction was that the instrument was shifted. On the instruction it was given to us that the instrument was shifted after the second reading. So this is our second reading. So if the instrument was shifted after the second reading, which means this reading is a foresight. Remember from the beginning I told us that your foresight is the last observation you make before you move your instrument. So since this was the reading taken after the instrument was shifted, which means this was the last reading. And since this is the last reading, reading taken before the instrument was shifted, then this will be our what? This will be our foresight. So if this is our foresight and the instrument was moved to another point, maybe another intervisible point, then the next observation taken will be the first observation taken when the instrument was set up. So since it is the first observation taken when the instrument was set up, definitely it is our backside. So we recorded it under what? Under backside. So the first instruction has been met that the instrument was shifted after the second reading. And this is the second reading. Since it was shifted after this reading, then this reading is a what? It's a foresight. And the reading after it will be the first reading when the instrument was set up again, which definitely makes it a what? Which makes it a backside. Then the next thing was that they said it was shifted after the fourth reading again, which means this particular reading. So this particular reading will also be under what? Under our foresight. So if this is under our foresight, then the reading after it will be our backside because after the instrument was shifted, it was remounted or maybe they set it up again. And when they set it up again, the next observation they took will definitely be the first observation when they set up the instrument. And if it is the first observation when they set up the instrument, then it's definitely was a backside. Then subsequently, there were no other instructions of how instrument was shifted or maybe not shifted, which means our next observation is an intermediate site. Remember, I told us that an intermediate site is the observation you have other than your foresight afterwards, after your backside. So this will definitely be an intermediate site here. This is an intermediate site here. Then they said the next shift in instrument was done on the eighth reading. So let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So at this point, the instrument was shifted again. So if the instrument was shifted at this point, definitely this will be under our, our foresight. So that's why we recorded it under foresight. So recording this under foresight means the next observation after it will be recorded under what? Under backside. I hope it's clear. So the next observation will be recorded under backside because that was the first observation after the instrument was set up again on that new point it was shifted to. Then the next observation after that is an intermediate site, which is what? 2.050. Since there are no other observations again, this last observation will be our what our foresight because your foresight is the last observation you take on site, whereas your backsight is the first observation. So this your foresight can be to a benchmark or it cannot be to a benchmark because maybe if you just want to close your loop at a point that is not close to another benchmark, you can just have your last observation there. So this is another observation and this is the last observation on this particular leveling exercise which means this observation is our what is our foresight so we've been able to explain how these things or maybe how these readings rather can be filled or maybe how we can impute it on the computation sheet so we now want to use the rise and fall method to determine the reduced level of the other points from the question, we are told that 
the reduced level of the benchmark is what is 132.135 the reduced level of the benchmark is 132.135 so we have 132.135 here as the reduced level of the of the benchmark now the next thing we are going to do now is we are going to do the rise and fall we are going to compute for our rise and we are going to compute for our fall simply put rise is when you have the difference okay let's say rise and fall or rise or fall as the case may be is equal to your back side minus your fall side your back side minus your intermediate side your intermediate side minus your next intermediate side or your intermediate side minus what your first side so these are the equation that could or that can give you either rise or fall so rise it will be rise when the difference here is positive and it will be fall when the difference is what is negative so what do i mean we have values under our back side intermediate side and our fourth side so what we are going to do is that we are going to find the difference between these two values so whatever we get if it is positive then it will be under rise if it is negative then it will be under four so how do we find the difference this is the formula we are going to use your back side minus your fourth side your back side minus your intermediate side your back your intermediate side minus your next intermediate side or your intermediate side minus what your first side so it is either of these um, equation we are going to use according to how the input is on the what is on the um, computation sheet so I haven't explained that let's start and see what happens so we get our calculator the first thing there is that we have um, 0.875 minus 1.235 which is around 0 0.360 0 0.360 and the value there is negative the value there is what is negative so since the value is negative that means it will be recorded under 4 so we have 0 0.360 so that's how we are going to calculate all of them until the last so these are actually the values of the rise or fall for this particular question so how do we go about it this back side minus this fourth side will give you this here this back side minus this will give you the value here this minus this will give you a value here this minus this will give you a value here this so that's how we did until we got to this point now the next thing that is worthy of note is how we are going to do it, how we are going to get the reduced level of the other points that we observed because that was the question they say calculate the reduced level of the observed points so this is actually the reduced level of the what of the benchmark 132.135 as was given in the question so to get the reduced level of the other points will be the reduced level of the benchmark plus or minus the change in elevation which will either be your rise or your fall so if it is plus it is rise if it is minus it is your fall so these things are very simple i hope you got it up to this point and i hope you've been paying attention but please if you missed anything at any point you can always pause the video maybe you go back you get it and you get to this point these things are very very simple now at this stage we've been able to get our rise we've been able to get our fall now what we want to determine now or what we want to compute for at the reduced level of the what of the observed points and we already know the reduced level of our of our benchmark so i haven't known the reduced level of our benchmark the reduced level of the other points that we are observed will be the reduced level of the benchmark plus or minus the rise or fall so if it is plus it is rise if it is minus it is what it is for so that's how we are going to do it so the first thing we have here is 132.135 so we have 132.135 then we say minus 0 0.360 the reason why we said it's minus is because this value is under 4 so the reduced level of the first point as we have here is 
So it is this same procedure we are going to adopt to get the reduced level of the other point. So the reduced level of the next point will be this value plus this since it is under rise. You see this point 0.925 is under rise. So the last result we have plus 0.925. That will give us the reduced level of the next point. And the reduced level of that point is 132.700. So this is how we are going to get the reduced level up to the last point. So as we can see, these are the reduced level of the observed points. So on this particular question we are solving, they did not tell us that the loop of the leveling closed on the first benchmark, which means there is no shake. So this is just like an open leveling loop. So on maybe our next question concerning leveling or maybe subsequently on the channel, we are going to discuss about how you are going to close on a point of known elevation and then you determine the error you get from your leveling exercise and how you are going to apply the correction then get your corrected leveling so this particular column here is for your distance or your shainage so on the question they told us that the leveling was taken at 20 meter interval which means we have 20 meter interval up to this point so that would be the values we are going to impute on this particular column. So I hope you found solution to this particular leveling problem we just discussed today. And then I believe you might still have questions if possible, either on this particular one or on any other leveling computation. You can leave that on the comment section and then we are going to attend to you as soon as possible so thanks for coming to class i hope you really followed it up to this point thanks for watching the video and then if you are a first time viewer you can subscribe to the channel and then you turn on the notification please leave a like there and then drop a comment so until next time we are going to see you make sure you stay safe take care